Hi, I'm Morali Satram. I'm the Vice President and General Manager of the Collaboration Software Group at Cisco. I'm responsible for WebEx, uh, meetings and instant messaging platform, as well as Cisco Quad, our social platform for the enterprise. Now you talk about social platforms. It's a collaboration tool. And right now there's, there's a fervor, I think you'd call it, around collaboration yep. within the enterprise. What's pushing that? What's causing that? You know, uh, Jeff, we've been using email as a primary form of communication now for about 30 years at some level or the other. And uh, the amount of misuse of tools like email has gotten to a point where a knowledge worker, you or me, cannot keep up on a day-to-day -day basis. When that kind of stuff happens, you get to a point where you question, are we doing the right things, right? Um, are we using the right tools? Is there a different, better approach? And I think that's what's pushing the appetite for people to look at new and different types of solutions. And social solutions become an interesting place to look at because they now have more of a ubiquitous feel. They have the kind of feature and functionality that most customers are looking for. And I think this transition is here to stay. It's not like email will disappear or anything. It becomes a modality. And it becomes a part of a broader collaboration strategy. And that's informed by a broad collaboration platform that brings social communications, content, all together, along with business process. Now, is there a user mindset that goes into the use of these tools or the adoption in the enterprise itself? And I ask that because I've heard people talk about, well, these tools are accessible. This is stuff that people are familiar with because yeah. they're using it with their family, with their friends, with college um, classmates, with other colleagues, yep. and they're using them in an informal setting. But does that now move to the enterprise, and does it maybe lessen the formality of the enterprise as a whole? Or are there other strengths that it brings with it? I think it does um, sort of relax the uh, organization and the formality, the hierarchical communication patterns that exist in organizations. And the thesis is that that give rise to, uh, gives rise to innovation, uh, gives rise to more a collaborative networked organization, which, you know, I think as we've seen in democracies and things, is a better way to sort of live on a day-to-day -day basis because information flow seems reasonable and real and, and, and it seems like it's meant to be, you know, in that form. Um, so I think that it's it's here to stay. You're, you're going to find that uh, you're talking about your question was around adoption and what sort of usage profiles. You know, not everybody will be in a position where uh, they'll be comfortable with these tools right away. Some people will. The younger generation, people who are used to using this in consumer networks, they will be readily available to use these tools. But some folks might say, "Hey, I don't need this." You know, I was email and voice, and phone calls are fine. But over time, what they'll find is everybody's gravitated about to these systems, and if, unless they move as well, they're going to be sort of marooned in the older technology. So we'll see that, uh, you know, the next five years, in my opinion, people, this will become de rigor. It's just, when you go into an enterprise, you'll have an account in a product like Cisco Quad, and that's how you get in, right? That's how you work. Now, speaking of Quad, let's go right into that. What, yeah. are, the, what are the strengths of the tool? I mean, what... Coming through the door, you're, let's say we're going to an organization that has relied on maybe some open source tools and mm -hmm. some yep. cobbled together solutions. Exactly. What does Quad offer and why does it offer this stuff? How do you figure out what you should put into the entire package? Sure, great question. So that question. it fits every company. Yeah, yeah. great question. Uh, there's three, three things that are critically different about this platform than any other approach out there in the industry. Number one is that we think c communications and collaborations are indeed one and the same thing. You can't collaborate separately of communicating with people. In fact, collaboration is all about people. And when you talk about people, it's natural for us to connect and communicate like we're doing now in real time. So you can't separate the two. And uh, there's no other product out there that brings real time communications and social and web 2.0 collaborations onto one platform. Right? That's one. The second is that it's a platform for the enterprise. It's not a point tool, it's not an open source element. It's, all those are great in what they do elementally. But if you have all sorts of tools that don't connect and talk to each other, Jeff, what you get to is this information explosion. And something that's discovered in one medium is never shared in the other. For us, collaboration should be a platform. Would you give email to only a subset of your users? It doesn't make any sense, does it? 
uh, would you give a phone only to 10% of your group, <laughs> your company and not the rest? It doesn't make any sense. So why is collaboration such that it, it, it sort of mushrooms in small pockets? Um, or like SharePoint is only in a department here or a department there. We believe that it's got to be a ubiquitous platform. That's the second difference. The third is that it is not a platform that you have to now figure out what to do. It's got a, a face, it's got an application that comes out of the box. And it's fully integrated with communications and it's done that at scale. Um, and part of what we're trying to do here is to enable all the sorts of interesting techniques and technologies that Facebooks of the world have figured out uh, that older enterprise software vendors, you know, typically, you know, don't use. So those are the three distinct, you know, capabilities that Quad brings as a social platform that is different than others. Now, you mentioned out of the box. How do you encourage users within an enterprise, within an organization, to adopt a new tool, be it Quad or be it some other collaboration tool that's out there. How do you, I guess, clear that hurdle or get them yeah. to clear the hurdle of, oh, I'm going to give away my, I'm not going to use Dropbox anymore. I'm not going to do a Skype call. I'm not going to use Google Docs to collaborate. I'm going to use this solution mm -hmm. that purports to be better than everything and it's all in one. Yeah. How do you get them, I guess, to find a path of least resistance to using that together. You know, we found through history is that something is several times better than the thing they use today, they're not going to use it, right? So our goal has always been to build an experience that is uh, fundamentally better uh, than, especially with the music on as well, uh, fundamentally better <laughs> I can than... I can ask that again if you want. No, no, no. That's okay. I think this is all good. It's a viral, viral kind of thing. Um, you know, I think the important thing is that the user experience has to be really strong, number one. Number two, um, it's critical that people understand our customers, and we do this all the time, that technology alone is not what makes these platforms run and work. Uh, we are, it's equal part process and culture. If a, co if a company does not have the uh, proclivity, the culture to go wanting to change it, the way it's wo it works and be more open and network, then no amount of tools is going to help. But this gives the opportunity for an organization to be more open and to be more uh, communicative and you know, more collaborative, and that will create more opportunities for um, serendipitous connections and gain of knowledge that wouldn't have existed otherwise. So we always tell our customers it's a combination of technology, process, and culture. And that's how we approach this. It's not just a tool. Now, where's it going to end? I mean, where does the industry go from here? Because we're here in Boston right now, yep. and we're at E2.0. And if you yourself had walked around the show floor, which I'm, I'm certain you have, just to see what every, everyone else is bringing to market, there are a lot of Me Too's out there. Yeah. There are a lot of products out there that purport to do the same thing. Exactly. To be the solution in the enterprise for social communication and collaboration. Where's it gonna go? Is there, can everyone fit, first off, and will there be some clear winners? Uh, there will be some clear winners, Jeff, and, and you've seen this in every market, right? Number one, they'll, you'll see consolidation. It, it, there's no room for 50 of the same sorts of minor sort of, you know, solutions that don't meet an enterprise need or scale. Um, so there will be consolidation for sure. We've already seen it. You know, you've seen a couple of companies be bought recently uh, by bigger vendors. In the end, like anything else, there'll be two or three big vendors that have global solutions that can support a large footprint. And um, just like it's happened in every industry, from banking to airlines to high tech, and even in high tech, if you think about uh, CRM, ERP applications, you're down to one or two vendors. If you take uh, voice and telephony, like Cisco as an example, you're down to one or two vendors, and we have high in the market share. So we'll get that in social collaboration as well. And our goal with Cisco is to be one of those, right? And we are slowly building up to make that happen because we can support customers globally. We have a communications infrastructure and we can integrate those experiences better than anyone else. Will the development of Quad, and this is using the crystal ball, development of Quad have offspring that will work for smaller, small to mid-sized businesses? Or are we looking at an enterprise solution and let everyone else sort of fend for themselves until they get that big. You know, from our perspective, we have positioned Quad with us and our partners to be 
uh, available for companies that are a thousand employees and above. Okay, um, and so it doesn't mean that a company which has got 200 employees can't use something like Claude. It's just not how we are going to target our customer base. But through our partners, we expect that they will provide either hosted or cloud-based services based on Quad that deliver those capabilities. And so we, we see that almost anyone can use this. Now, if you're a smaller company, five or 10 people, you don't need a social network to support you know, the knowledge of who the you know, things are going on, but you do need a platform that stores your documents or connects with your voice platforms or you know, essentially integrates with instant messaging or so that you can connect with your suppliers and, and so on and so forth. So we see that there's a lot of use cases there, but it's likely that our partners deliver it for us, not us directly. What's the best feature of your software? It's got to be the integration of real-time communication. So if I find you, Jeff, in the system, your profile, and I want to say, wow, this guy knows something I need to know. Um, what do you do today in a platform that's not real-time integrated? You go look at their number, you pick your mobile phone, uh, you call the person, and you find he's not or she's not there at the other end, you leave them a voicemail. Um, or you send them an email and then you wait. But what if there was a way in which I say, I'm looking for a mobile expert and I find three names, one of which is Jeff, and I find that the other two are not available, all, all in one click. I find that Jeff is available, I instant message you directly or I call you directly. You, you know, these are critical elements of the product. There's another thing that, uh, you asked for one, but I wanna give you two, yeah, okay. two for the price of one. <laughs> um, there's this key capability we call the post. You know, how many of your customers will, or people listening to this know the difference between a wiki and a blog and a discussion forum? You know, doesn't matter. Yeah. The fact is you're creating content and you're sharing it with people. We have a simplified content model we call the post. There's no, it's just, and you don't even have to call it a post. It's a content model component. And you create multimedia content, whether it's web, voice, video, you can embed things, embed documents, and then you share it. It's just natural. We don't think anybody else is taking that kind of approach. Nice. What haven't I asked that you had hoped I'd ask? And what other thoughts do you have on the future of collaboration in the enterprise? Um, you know, uh, one of the things that I thought you might ask is, is this a horizontal solution or a vertical one, right? So... Um, I, I had already heard from a number of people that it is horizontal and then it'll work its way up, but it also depends on the organization. I mean, not to answer your question, but it depends on the... It depends. We found at Cisco, as we rolled it out, we've rolled out Cisco Quad now to 75,000 employees. And uh, what's interesting is that we're learning that it is uh, it is both vertical and horizontal. It's a horizontal set of capabilities, but you need vertical use cases. And when I say vertical use cases, it means what does an individual knowledge worker do on a day-to-day -day basis if they belong to a finance function or a product function or a marketing function or a learning function. They don't use it all the same way, but you need to educate them about how they can get value of the system in the context of their job and their role. And so that's one. The other Uber way of thinking about this vertical thing is, as we're doing with Capgemini, we're looking at life sciences as a vertical and saying, how can we make the creation and uh, the ability for a company to create new pharmaceuticals faster, cheaper, quicker, because it's an inherently collaborative process, not only within the company, but with F the FDA, with your clinical trials, with your customers, with your patients, et cetera. So how do you make that faster and, and, and better? You can use social tools to essentially make that happen. So there's different types of vertical opportunities here, I think, in the long run. Very cool. Thank cool. you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate this.